Hello everybody. Today we're going to be taking the Aurora setup that we made in the last video and retrofitting it to work in the context of an entire planet. So we can get these like little strips of Auroras uh, that bend around the planet, uh, as you can see here. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in the last video, we left off with this sort of flat sheet of Auroras that we could use for like environments and such. But how do we get these to wrap around a sphere? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to delete this rectangular prism that we have here, and we're going to add in a cube. And we're basically going to turn this into a sphere. So we're going to go into edit mode, press W, and subdivide this a couple times. Um, that should be enough. And then shift alt S, and then press 1 to turn it into a sphere. And then we're going to tab out of edit mode and let's uh, scale this up to an appropriate scale uh, for our planet. So Earth's diameter is 12,000 kilometers or thereabouts. So I'm going to set the dimension to 12,000. This is 12,000 meters. So it's one to 1,000 scale, but um, 12,000 kilometers bit much. Uh, we don't necessarily need to work with complete real world scale. Uh, and then I'm going to press control A and apply the scale here. So make sure the scale is one on each axis and the dimensions is 12,000 on each axis. Um, and I'm just going to call this the ground uh, sphere. And then I'm just going to leave this one be. I'm going to shift D to duplicate it and then call this one our auroras. So let's add the aurora shader that we made last time to our auroras here. And before we go into edit, or before we go into render mode, uh, let's do something real quick that'll make it easier to visualize uh, what we're doing. So this is gonna be adding in a displacement node and then connecting the aurora height to the height of this displacement and make sure the mid level is set to zero and then connect this up to our displacement uh, output of the material. And then in the material properties tab, you're going to want to go to settings, change displacement to displacement only. And in render view, we see we have a little bit of, uh, we have some interesting auroras happening here. Uh, they're just still going straight up, uh, even at the equator. So this is kind of funny. Um, but uh, we need to, to to solve this to create them to make sure that they're going like radially outwards. They're pointing radially outwards. Um, we need to sort of change up how we think about the um, coordinates that we're using for these, right? So in, our, in the first video, uh, we were basically just using the gradient um, that we get when we just sampled the z-axis. Uh, we were using that to sort of drive the look and the, like the strength of our auroras. Um, and we were also using two-dimensional noise, which essentially just removes the z-axis from the, the mapping, right? And both of these work together to get um, the spires that we have here and the fall off. But instead of uh, the um, instead of using this Z axis as that sort of invariant thing that we're, we were using before, we can instead use the um, distance to the norm or distance to the origin uh, as our primary like gradient that we're using. So to do that, we can um, duplicate this divide node and set it to length. And then I'm going to connect that up there. Actually, I'm going to connect this up here. Um, and then we're going to feed that into this first input of this divide node. And I'm removing that separate x, y, z. Um, basically, what this does is it instead changes the, again, the, the gradient that we were using from the z axis to this sort of radially, radial gradient thing material. Um, and we also need to add another slider here for a planet radius. So I'm just going to label this planet radius. 
And then since we set the diameter of our planet to 12,000, the radius is just half of that. Um, and I'm going to duplicate the subtract node here, make sure to uncheck the clamp, and then um, put this into the second input. So it was black there for a second, but now we can see we have um, the fall off at least is correct, even if the direction is still kind of wonky. All right, like we can see the pillars are, are going upwards, but at least the strength and like the coloring is, is behaving as we'd expect um, as we get further away from the uh, surface of the planet. And you can see, so the planet radius, if we change that, it'll like sort of raise the auroras up. Uh, if we lower it down, it'll sink them into the ground. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what that's doing. And that's why this needs to kind of match up with the like dimensions of the uh, planet sphere. Um, so let's now get the spires to behave. So before, remember, we were using this 2D noise. Um, now we need to use regular 3D noise um, because 2D noise obviously won't cut it because just going up and down. Um, so we're going to use 3D noise and we can see we don't have the weird directionality thing here, but we also don't have those pillars forming. Um, so what we can do is we can use a um, normalize node. So that's just a vector math node set to normalize. And then I'm going to uh, pop that in right here. Um, and we can remove this divide node because now that won't do anything. Um, and then we can also consequently remove this Aurora scale um, parameter that we have here. So now it might be a little bit hard to see because we're kind of blurring it a decent bit. Let me just uh, increase the, actually, I'm going to increase the Aurora height. I'm going to set that to 500. Uh, we can see that we have these sorts of spires uh, forming. They're a little bit fuzzy at the moment, um, and we can solve that by um, sort of increasing the scale of our noise. But uh, they, it does it does work, which is quite nice. So we're already most of the way done here. Um, let's uh, let's sort of confine these to a couple rings, like around the. Uh, around the like, I don't know what it's called, but like, you know how they kind of form in rings, like one at the top and one at the bottom. Um, luckily that is quite easy. So I'm going to duplicate this add node. I'm going to connect it up here and I'm going to set this to dot product. And I'm going to set um, the vector here to zero, oops, zero, zero, one, right? And this will essentially do the same thing as isolating the um, uh, Z axis again, um, but this time uh, it's a little bit different because uh, we're using these normalized coordinates. Um, and you can see this is the coordinate system we're using. Uh, AGX, uh, which is the color system or the color space, will kind of mess up with negative values. Um, but uh, hopefully, this is rather familiar. Um, but anyways, we can use a math node set to absolute um, and then uh, add in a color ramp here. So I'm just duplicating that. Um, and you can see we're creating that kind of ring that we have right there. Uh, I'm going to set this color ramp to ease um, just because I want the auroras to completely cut off uh, at the bottom there. And then I'm going to duplicate this multiply node, connect it up in here, and uh, multiply the noise texture um, by this multiply node. And we can see um, as we follow the chain, uh, now we have some auroras. So let's do a little bit more refinement to make these look a little bit better. I actually kind of like how they look right now, but I think that they should be a little bit stronger up here. So I'm going to move them a little bit 
uh, move this slider a little bit up. And then also going to change this value a little bit. Um, if I set this to one, they'll just kind of appear uniformly above that region. Um, so I'm not, I don't want them quite at one, but I want a little bit more like hints of auroras there. I think that's pretty good. And we can see these on the bottom too. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to load in a uh, image texture of the city lights. So I'm setting the coordinates to generated uh, and then sphere projection. And then I'm just going to grab uh, one of my night light, night lights images. This is included in the um, planet course, uh, those that tutorial series uh, you can find uh, in the first episode with the first project. Um, you can find the uh, zip like a zip file of all these textures in there if you want, or you could just download it directly from um uh, nasa visible earth it's just the blue marble night lights um, and this is a pretty solid result uh, i'd recommend fine-tuning this a little bit more for instance right now i think that the um uh dithering effect is a little bit strong so i might turn this down to like a 1025 um, and then also messing with the noise like for instance you can make this a little bit rougher uh, and then play with like the, the color ramps, um, just getting to a look that you guys uh, enjoy and that works for your shots. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully, I know this was a little bit, uh, possibly a little bit confusing for some of you, but um, this was pretty fun. Um, and yeah, uh, join our Discord in the link in the description below. Um, like and subscribe, maybe leave a comment if you enjoyed, if this helped you. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.